Hey everybody, welcome back. You're truly home over hermit. Um, I want to truly apologize for not uh, uploading basically this whole week. I had completely lost my voice after going out two nights in a row. And, um, anyway, that's on me. Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't even feel sick. I just couldn't talk. And every time I had to talk for a job or something, I kept on losing my voice worse. So I was like, I definitely can't do this because me talking for like one to two hours was not going to be conducive to me being able to do proper content, and I'm pretty sure you guys did not want to hear me whispering. Anyway, my throat is so scratchy, so I'm going to try to do two or three videos right now. I'm going to see how I feel as I go on. I have an MRI in like three hours, so I'll be doing more later tonight, and then I have a whole trip I have to do which was planned for like two to three weeks already. Uh, and yeah. So hopefully I can do enough that I have some videos that go up while I'm gone. I, I don't want to promise anything though, considering everything. But anyway, um, I, I noticed a lot of you guys actually like some of the random stuff I bring to this channel. Which I highly appreciate. So, considering I'm trying to save up for like my next major trip. Like, the one I'm doing is just like a two-day thing for the weekend. Um, But uh, I'm trying to save up for like my next major trip. Where I go somewhere and spend like two, two weeks to a month at least. Um, I decided I would try this, this, this is completely random and like out the blue, but it says top 10 cities for single men. So, <laughs> hey man, I gotta figure out where my, where my, my luck is best. Of course, I, I, like I said, I just woke up, I'm not doing anything today cause I got the MRI later. So, uh, um, I'm just going to be cleaning myself up later and uh, putting together and packing and stuff and hopefully recording. So, anyway, but um, yeah, let's get into this and let's see what they're talking about. Hopefully, this works considering my computer has given me problems for like the past hour. Um... It's not gonna work, huh? Okay. W one second. Okay, so I th I think everything's good. Let's get into this. Please don't prove me a liar. Okay. Okay, we're here. If you're a single guy looking to meet an attractive girl for a friendship or just a short-term affair, then you need to look no further. In this video, you'll find out the top 10 cities for single men in the world ranked from 10 to 1. Let's get started. At number 10, we have Wroclaw in Poland. And Wroclaw is one of the best cities for single men because of a number of reasons. The average girl here is quite high on the attractiveness scale and the city is perfectly laid out. All of the main areas for meeting women in the daytime and nighttime are within walking distance of the centre. Even better, the girls are friendly and open to an approach from a foreigner. Now where to stay in Wroclaw? So stay in the centre near the Rhinex Square where all the action is. The outskirts of Wroclaw are not nearly as attractive and you won't see many hot women walking around. Wroclaw is perfect for meeting women at any time of day. So take a walk around the main square and approach women you like the look of. Polish girls are sweet and friendly but this can be deceptive. 
you need to make it clear that you're interested in her. So I recommend a direct day game approach, uh, as you can probably already tell. Another less well-known option to meet women in the daytime in Rotslav is Rotslavia, which opened in late 2017. This is a shopping mall. You'll find lots of hot uh, Polish girls walking around here who are open to chat. Okay, so Rotslav in the daytime. I'm not a day person, so... The fact the only reason I'm even up as early as I am... I think my time my time is like what it's like ten in the morning. Now my phone doesn't want to work either. That's fine. Uh yeah, ten sixteen. Um yeah, I should have known that. I said I have an appointment in like three hours, but we'll have to leave for it anyway. Um yeah, uh, let's see where it goes from here, cause uh, daytime stuff. Usually not really my thing. Unless they like to day drink. Anyway, let's go. In terms of nightlife, the two best nightclubs are near the main oh, square. Okay. And two good options are Cherry's Club and Grey's. You will find the best looking girls in Rotslav go to these two venues. And number nine, also in Poland, is Warsaw. So Warsaw ranks quite highly because it scores well in all areas. It's a big city which is very livable, civilised and chock-a-block with girls who like foreign men. And before I go on further though, a little note of caution. Uh, the Polish are very rightly proud people and they want to keep their country great. They really don't like to see foreign foreigners staggering around drunk and acting rowdy. So be care very careful and respectful when you're in Poland. I, I can't help but laugh because what he said, uh, they like to keep their country great. I can't help but laugh with the whole make America great again thing, even though it's uh, more like uh, make America backwards again. But, um, yeah, there's that. Like foreign men. And before I go on further, though, a little note of caution. Uh, the Polish are very rightly proud people and they want to keep their country great. They really don't like to see foreign, foreigners staggering around drunk and acting rowdy, so be care very careful and respectful when you're in Poland. Polish guys will have no trouble approaching you and telling you off if you act out, and if you escalate, they will escalate back. And if you act normal and don't get out of line, you'll be fine, because the Polish are generally speaking great people. At least I can hold my liquor. Too much of an alcoholic to act a fool, man. But uh no I understand I, I understand that. Uh quick little funny story I had like I think they were Russian. Might have been Ukrainian. I have I have trouble telling the difference in their accent. But uh this dude came to the US and he was calling uh the MTA workers, that's our MTA Metropolitan Transit Society that the subway workers, people that work the trains, or public transit. So they, they were calling them the N word with a hard R. Yeah. And me being a white, like, well, Puerto Rican, but heavily looking white dude, I was, I basically just got mad at them because. These people were on the job, like, they were trying to hold their cool, and I was just like, yo, you're the type of people that make me look bad, even though I don't like you or respect you for that type of point of view. And don't get this wrong, I have, no, I have a lot of Russian friends, like, that are very respectful, that are very cool to chill with. But, uh, th this couple, this was in, like, uh, Times Square. Like, they were obviously tourists. And I was just like, how dare you come here and then, like, insult people for their race? So, no, I understand, like, uh, you don't, you, you're, you're gonna get, you're gonna get into problems of going to a country that you don't know and then basically cursing people out. For no reason. So, anyway, that's understandable. I don't blame them. So be care very careful and respectful when you're in Poland. 
Polish guys will have no trouble approaching you and telling you off if you act out. And if you escalate, they will escalate back. And if you act normal and don't get out of line, you'll be fine because the Polish are generally speaking great people. So where to stay in Warsaw? Anywhere in the center is fine. Find the street Marzokolska and any of the side streets have good accommodation close to where the action is. And if you want to meet women in the daytime in Poland, uh, in my opinion, it's not at all difficult to meet women uh, in the daytime. There's enough girls around to give you ample opportunity to approach, ranging from decent looking all the way up to stonkingly hot, although you don't see many of those right at the top end. So simply wander around the main streets in the center. I don't consider myself stonkingly hot, so uh, I'll definitely stay with the decent looking. Enough girls around to give you ample opportunity to approach, ranging from decent looking all the way up to stonkingly hot, although you don't see many of those right at the top end. So simply wander around the main streets in the center, carry yourself well, and meet eyes with the cute Polish girls. They are not shy and not afraid to stare right back at you, and they give you an invitations to approach. So go ahead and do so. In terms of nightlife in Warsaw, you've got Halle Kors Reminds me of upstate uh, New York. Um, for those of you not from the United States, United States is 50 states. I live in New York City, which is like the southernmost part of New York State. Uh, because it's such a big city and because there's a lot of, to be frank, assholes that basically just are rude and approach girls. A lot of pro girls are very uh, defensive, which I understand. I understand why. Um, but no, I, 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 I've said in other videos, uh, I'm pr pretty sure I've told the story before, but I know not everybody watches all my videos. Um, when I went upstate one time with my uncle, like, I just caught a girl's eye, and I just smiled at her, and she said hi to me first, which was something that, based off where I'm from, is, like, so not normal. Because <laughs> they just think you're a creep if you're looking at them. Where I'm from, I'm saying. But, um, so, upstate, I was like, wow, this is really different. And, um, it actually caught me so off guard that, that, like, completely threw me off my game. Like, everything I was thinking of saying went out the window <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> now, this, this this was years ago. This was probably, like, uh, about nine, eight, eight, nine years ago. Something like that. But, um, yeah, no, it completely threw me off my game. I wasn't used to. I was used to having to try a lot. So just to get greeted so openly and welcomely. Welcoming. Sorry. Yeah, it, it, it 100% threw me off. I was like, oh, wow. She actually wants to have a conversation. Which in a way messed me up so much that nothing even ended up happening. But uh, th that was on me. I mean, I was out of my element. It's uh, part of the reason I realized I'd probably do better in other places than I do in my own city. Which is funny, but at the same time, it's just honest. Like, because for some reason, assholes that go too far seem to do well in my city. And I have no respect for them, but hey, it happens. Zishki, this is a delightful indoor restaurant and bar area built with an open plan layout. And this place you'll find the best looking girls in Warsaw hanging out with their friends any night of the week from about 7pm till about 11pm. Try to get a seat at the bar area and talk to the girls in your vicinity and keep your eyes open and see if you get any girls checking you out. And if you do, then it's your signal to go over and talk to her. And in terms of nightclubs, uh, for a guy new to Warsaw, the best prep bet is probably Mazel Vieska Street. 
Here you'll find many clubs, all cl clustered within short walking distance of each other. And probably the best of the clubs on this street is Club 13. And try going on a Thursday night, because the queues on Friday and Saturday can be unbearable. Now changing countries for number 8, we have... Thurs Thursday Thursdays, that's what we call it over here. S especially for uh, college girls. As, uh, in college, you get to choose your own schedule, pretty much. And a lot of college students like to get themselves three-day weekends, so they don't take classes uh, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So Thursday night is like the first night they don't have to worry about going to sleep early or submitting anything. So yeah, no, nah, I'm used to Thursday nights being a good night. Day can be unbearable. Now, changing countries for number eight, we have Sofia in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. So, Sofia in Bulgaria has stonkingly hot women in abundance, but there are some downsides that are quite unique to the city. Firstly, there is an underground mafia which runs large parts of the local economy. Mm. So, whilst you'll not get involved in trouble with the local mafia, unless you are really stupid, it does taint the overall experience. For example, in some of the high-end clubs, you'll notice it's nigh on impossible to even access the best-looking women because they're all sectioned off in VIP areas with the local mafia guys. Of course, you never know who... That's also true in China. It, 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 either with the local Chinese mafia or um, with people that just carry obscene amounts of money and can buy their way into those types of sections all experience for example in some of the high-end clubs you'll notice it's nigh on impossible to even access the best looking women because they're all sectioned off in vip areas with the local mafia guys of course you never know who they are with so it does add an element of danger to proceedings you have to keep your wits about you but don't be put off. There are still plenty of places to go with very attractive women, and the chances of getting into trouble are minimal as long as you're sensible. Uh, I don't know how to beat the first two, because so far um, this does not sound very attractive. It's like okay, the girls are cute, but uh, if if well, I mean, I guess that happens anywhere, but still, like. I don't know. I don't know. I'd rather not go someplace that I might get in trouble with their local mafia. What is going on? No, I did not minimize this. Okay. Let's go back to full screen and let's continue. Thank you. But don't be put off. There are still plenty of places to go with very attractive women, and the chances of getting into trouble are minimal as long as you're sensible. So where to stay in Sofia? You want to stay plumb in the centre, as close to the Sheraton Hotel as possible. And bear in mind that Sofia scores quite badly on livability for two main reasons. The city itself is uh, not particularly attractive, in my view. It's got potholes everywhere, and it's got a dreary, depressing atm atmosphere, unless it's midsummer. And be warned, in, in the summer, it can get suffocatingly hot, so you need to stay close to the centre. Uh, the nightlife is quite spread out, so you'll need to take taxis. Try to use Uber, because the local taxi drivers are ill-tempered, boorish, and scam artists. If you don't hook up with an approved company, they will definitely rip you off, and unless you're prepared to physically fight them, you'll lose money. And uh, obviously, need I say it, don't get into a fight with uh, taxi drivers in Bulgaria. Um, actually quite accustomed to that. Um, similar thing would happen to me in China. Um, I grew accustomed to sitting in the front seat with my GPS on right next to them to show them wh where we're going and exactly how we're supposed to get there. Because it was like, uh, don't think because I don't understand Chinese. I'm an idiot. But, um, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm well aware. It, it, even in New York City, it's one of the reasons I hate picking people up from the airport. Like, uh, especially since at the moment my license isn't good. 
So, um, <laughs> yeah. And, and they assume everyone that comes in the airport doesn't know what the hell the, where the hell they're going or where the hell they're at. And it's just sort of like, yeah. But in China, it, it was way worse. Um, I mean, I was able to get out of a lot of situations just due to me being six foot tall, 200 plus pounds, and most people out there at most probably average around five foot five and like a buck 20. So not too many people would really want to get into a problem with me. But I like I had one taxi driver and I was actually with a Chinese friend, but he didn't speak Mandarin, he spoke Cantonese. For those of you who don't know, Mandarin is the national language out there. Uh one of the many dialects of Chinese. Um, but yeah, this, that he couldn't communicate with him. And I definitely couldn't. I'm horrible with other languages. Uh Language was never my strong suit. It was always math. But, um, I basically, I was watching the GPS, and I'm, and unfortunately, I made the mistake of sitting in a backseat with my friend, and I, I, I did have the GPS on, and I noticed he basically drove us around the same block, like, two times. And I was just like, I just literally looked at him like, yo, he's driving us around. And, um, uh, basically we demanded to stop, long story short, n n nothing got out of hand because it was already daylight at that point. Yeah, their clubs close at like six, seven in the morning. So it was already daylight by that point. But um I didn't want to pay him anything. My friend basically agreed to pay him forty. The uh, the the thing was already at forty four. The whole trip shouldn't have even I had taken that exact trip from that club to my uh apartment that I was staying at for less than 40 so I already knew I'm like okay you're you're absolutely ripping us off you're looking at us like people that just oh you're stupid you're not from here and I could take advantage of you and my friend basically paid him because we just I told him to stop and we just got out and we're like, no, I was like, I, I know, I know how to walk from here. Screw it. And, um, the guy jumped out the cab, grabbed on to me. And I was just like, bro, you're trying to scam me. Now you're trying to play the victim. Like I'm trying to rob you. You're a scam artist. My friend was basically like, here, here, here just, just, just take this 40 and let us go. Because he, he knew me well enough. I mean, this was a couple years back. I was a bit more of a hothead back then. And, like, I was just like, bro, I'm really going to smack the absolute shit out of you. <laughs> like, bro, you do not know who I am. And, honestly, I don't care. Like, if I'm not in my country, it's just sort of like, you're trying to scam me. That's a robbery. Now you're trying to act like I'm the robber. Even though I've done this trip over a dozen times and never got charged close to as much to not even be next to my house. I was just like, oh my God. But anyway, my, my friend was just like, yeah, he was like, oh, yeah, it, it, it's only 40 Chinese dollars. Let's just give it to him. 
And I was like, all right, fine. Give me 20. I'll give him 20. Now we meet the hell alone. And we walk from there. But, um, I, I, and I had a few in me. So trust me, that was not the right night for some dude like half my weight to really be trying to push this. Anyway, 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 uh, I, 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 I probably, if, if I knew Chinese, I would have found a way to reason with him better, I'm not 100% proud of how I did it, but it, I, I just felt like, dude, you're trying to screw me, because you're just like, oh, Americans, they have money, so I can take their money, and I'm just like, oh, no, you can't. Anyway, it is what it is. It's all in the past now. It doesn't really matter. Let's continue. So how do you meet women in Sofia? Um, you can expect a less friendly res response from Bulgarian women in nightclubs compared to other cities on this list. The local girls do actually like their local men, Bulgarian men. And Bulgarian men are actually quite well known in this region of the world as being tough, strong, good looking and quite alpha. For this re reason, I'd recommend the daytime approach and bars. So stick around the main square near the Sheraton Hotel. From there, you can walk straight up the main street, which is called Vitosha Boulevard. This is a long street with good footfall, where you're most likely to see well-dressed, good-looking Bulgarian women taking a slow walk, often wearing their very sexy boots and avoiding the potholes. <laughs> a direct, no-nonsense approach works well here. Just get to the point and tell her you'd like to take her out somewhere or invite her for a coffee and a drink when you first meet her. Now, for nightlife in Sofia in Bulgaria... I'd check out the club Terminal 1. It's not as table-based as some of the other clubs, and you'll have a much better chance of actually physically meeting a good-looking Bulgarian woman there. And he also must really scope out the piano bars that are dotted all around the city. So Sofia is not a tourist destination, though there are some foreigners, but in piano bars you'll find almost no foreigners at all. Instead, you'll find some of the best-looking women in Sofia, mixed with friends in groups. For that reason, it can be hard to approach, but try perching at the bar and striking up a conversation with girls in the near vicinity. And of course, still display your interest, but in a non-threatening way, so that she would be happy to bring you into her group. Now, number seven on the list is Belgrade in Serbia. Now, if you like tall, beautiful, long-legged brunette girls, your eyes will pop out of your head in Belgrade in Serbia. The city is an assault on the senses, with beautiful young women parading around all across the city. The nightlife here is also very good. Now you might wonder why the ranking is not even higher than number seven. Well, there's two main problems with Belgrade. First of all, the city itself is not much fun. There just really isn't much to do at all. And secondly, from about April until the end of September, it is unbearably hot and sticky, especially for a white skinned man from Britain or the USA. It's almost impossible to walk around comfortably during the daytime without being bathed in sweat instantly. And finally, the competition. Serbian guys are tall and good looking. Yeah, that, that, that's off my list. Uh, I, I I sweat real quick. I'm I'm best in cold weather. Uh, that that, that one's off my list. The uh, the first two sounded much better, even though they're supposed to be ten and nine. But eight and seven sound much worse than ten and nine. Daytime without being bathed in sweat instantly. And finally, the competition. Serbian guys are tall and good looking. So Serbian girls are interested in foreigners, but you need to have a lot of value to get the best looking girls. Uh, an average guy in Serbia is going to struggle so in, Bel pay. in Belgrade. So in my view, the best way to meet women is in the daytime in Belgrade. And the main street is Nezmihalova. On this street, you'll see lots of coffee shops, restaurants and bars. We can get out of the sun and watch the women go by. And if you see one you like, act quickly and just make sure your bill is paid before you do so. Otherwise, take a walk around the street and the side roads and explore. You'll have the layout of the city in about a day, because there really isn't that much to it. And sadly, the word has got out about Belgrade, and on occasions the streets are infested with miscalibrated pickup clowns, sometimes 20 or more, running up and down the street, saying the same thing over and over again, and generally creating a bad vibe. In a city as small as intimate as Belgrade, so word gets around. So if this happens while you're there, considering consider venturing away from the main street. You don't want to be lumped in with the uh, pickup clowns. So number six on the list is Austin in Texas. So Austin in Texas is a wild city. Here you will find pretty hot women who are relatively easy to approach. 
actually, I've never been in Texas. I've heard this, though. Um, there's a whole, like, YouTube thing where they, like, go there. And I might need to take a leak. Yeah, no, I should just go take a leak. Um, I'm about to say, please don't tell me it wasn't recording. All right, give me, like, 30, well, not even. You, you'll have be, I'll be back in, like, two seconds to you. Hold on. Okay, my bad. We're back. Um, yeah, let's continue. A big ass thing popping up on my screen. Or so where to go and what to do? So the main bar and nightclub area is Sixth Street. Oh yeah. Here you will find. Yeah, it's exactly where I heard of. My bad. I I, I didn't mean to pause that quick, but yeah, Austin, Texas, Sixth Street. That's where I heard. I I, de I definitely heard that. Find pretty hot women who are relatively easy to approach. So where to go and what to do. So the main bar and nightclub area is 6th Street. Here you will find 52 bars and nightclubs to suit any taste. And better yet, they are all close together, which explains the high ranking for livability and nightlife. As you will see from the rating, you can also meet single girls in Austin by approaching women in the daytime. And an ideal place to do this is in the Greenbelt area. Because Austin enjoys good weather throughout the year, can I ask why, I really want to know why he keeps on talking about this whole daytime thing. Because if I'm coming there as a tourist, I'm not trying to find a girlfriend. Like, I'm trying to find something for either the night or while I'm there. I'm not trying to find a permanent girlfriend. So, I don't know why he keeps on talking about this whole daytime thing. It kind of is, is, is not my style. It's just not my style. You'll find plenty of young, attractive women to approach who are in a good mood and usually open to meeting a guy. Now, number five on the list is Las Vegas in the United States. So if I was to summarize Las Vegas in one word, it would be intense. Bored. Here you will find some of the hottest women on earth, all gathered in one place and all looking for a good time in this 24-hour city. They don't call it Sin it. City for nothing. There is a staggering, staggering variety of bars and nightclubs, and for those men who like a challenge, the biggest and most famous strip clubs on the planet. So generally speaking, stick to the last... Never pick up a stripper. Telling all y'all out there right now, never try to be, pick up a stripper. Been there, done that. It's not cheap. It's not easy. It takes a lot of goddamn effort. And it might not even be worth it. That's a Vegas strip for ease of access and variety of bars and clubs. But here's the thing. Despite the sheer number of very hot women, there is intense competition. If you go to a nightclub or bar, expect men from all over the world to be hitting on women. And some of these nightclubs have an unfavorable male to female ratio, which can make it a frustrating experience for the average guy. For this reason, you could try meeting women in the daytime. However, because the city is so damn hot, you're going to want to stick around to air-conditioned lounge bars. So probably the best one is Peppermill Diner and Lounge. This place is a cool lounge bar and is the most well-known hangout place in Las Vegas. Pro tip, now if you're feeling confident in your skills, you can usually find strippers in this bar after their shift. Head over about 4 or 5 a.m., yes I know, and sit at the bar and start talking. So number four on the list is Zagreb in Croatia. So Zagreb has some of the hottest women in the world, without a doubt. The women are generally tall, athletic and naturally beautiful. However, this is not an easy place to attract women. You have to date the girls, spend some time with them and be, generally be a high quality guy yourself if you want to get the best women. Croatian guys... I thought they said this is 10 best cities for single males. I thought this was something for like guys looking to travel. Like I, I I don't I'm not trying to like be a sugar daddy to some to some girl I'm never gonna see after my trip is over. Like I I don't know I don't know I don't know. It, it isn't so far the the first two and Austin both sounded good, but the second two and. Las Vegas, I'm, I'm going to tell you all right now. No. No. Don't do it. 
especially for my out of the country people that are not from the U.S. Don't do Las Vegas. You no. Unless you want to go to some place where prostitution is legal, well, that'll work. But uh, other than that, no, bad idea. Bad idea. Also offer quite stiff competition. They might not approach that much, but they are clued into the local scene. They are relaxed and they're natural alpha males, and often tall, good-looking, and well-built too. So if you decide to visit Zagreb, then the best place to stay is right in the centre. It's a beautiful city, and it's first world standard, and it's easy to live in. Until you know what's going on, however, it can be a little boring. It's not flashy like some of the other cities on this list. So the best place to meet women in Zagreb is book an apartment near to... Jelasic Square. All the nightlife, cafes and places to meet women in the daytime are close by. To meet women in the daytime, simply take a walk around the square and approach. Don't lie to the girls, be respectful and dress well. People in Zagreb, men and women, always look good. A slovenly appearance won't cut it here. And probably the best club to go to is Gallery Club. This has some of the best looking women in Zagreb and therefore the world. Your mouth will hit the floor when you go there. Expect stiff competition and difficulty in accessing the women because of the VIP tables. However, if you're from a Western country and you have some money, it's not too much of a stretch to hire a table yourself. Don't get into the trap of sticking on your table and not chatting to the girls. Get the table, but treat it as a base and walk around the club. Check out the girls and be prepared to approach. You might well face some attitude from the hottest women, because these girls know their value. But hey, if you want to attract some of the best looking women on the planet, you've got to be prepared to deal with this. Now, in front of Zagreb is number three, which is Minsk in Belarus. Minsk is actually joint second with uh, the other city on this list, Moscow. You can actually think of Minsk as a mini Moscow. The two countries are very closely aligned. Belarus is still somewhat closed off for horny men looking for nice women. They have a visa entry system requiring you to get a letter of invitation. In 2018, however, the country is starting to open up. Whilst this, this visa is not difficult to attain, it does keep the majority of stag party and cheap flight getaway visitors away, and it's still something of an undiscovered treasure. Because of this, the girls in Minsk are sheltered from the negative effects of feminism, attitudes of Western media, and things like that. They are also naturally thin and beautiful, and they have excellent character too. The city is somewhat grim and forbidding, but in 2018 has benefited from inward investment and is gradually getting a facelift. So where do you want to stay in Minsk? Anywhere pal near Palace Republic, that is the main square in Minsk. The three best streets to stay in are Nezaviza Mosti Square, October Square, and considered Karl Marx Street also. Now, Minsk is a great place to meet women in the daytime, so the centre of Minsk is quite bustling, and you'll see good-looking women everywhere. Girls in Minsk are playful and forthright in letting you know that they like the look of you, so expect prolonged eye contact and signals that they'd like you to approach. An unexpectedly good place to meet women in the daytime is around the connecting subways that are dotted all around the centre. Now, though they look grim and forbidding, you'll notice loads of hot women walking around as they try and navigate the city centre. So be respectful when you approach, and bear in mind that the women here can be cautious. Despite the numerous signals to approach that you'll receive, women in Minsk know their value and expect to be treated with respect. So nightlife in Minsk. The best club by far is Dozari. It's about four to five miles out of the centre, so you'll need to take a taxi. I've had several legendary nights. Okay. Can I just say something that's completely distracting me? I know sometimes I keep my mic a little bit close to my face and people hear me breathing, but it sounds like he's talking into it like straight here every fucking five seconds. Like, bro, chill. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That, that, that's just me. It's not meant to be hate, but like, bro, if you gotta take a, such deep of a breath, at least turn your face. Or try. And it's one of the most recommended clubs anywhere on this list. The key here is to spend the time in the dance floor areas and round by the bars. Don't get stuck into the trap of sitting in your own private group in the VIP area, staring longingly at the hot girls as they walk past. Check out the girls and make it obvious you're interested in them. 
If you maintain a happy vibe and send out clear signals to the girls, you should notice before too long that you'll be getting lots of a positive attention back. It's then time to move in and do what you attempt to do to pick her up. And there's a big section on picking up girls in nightclubs in my book, Primal Seduction, and obviously my video product, Secret Society. So the next, uh, number two on the list, is Moscow in Russia. So your jaw will hit the floor when you take a walk around Moscow in Russia. The motherland is home to some of the best looking women on the planet. Moscow can unfortunately be expensive though, which is why it scores lower on livability than some of the other cities on this list. Also, the city is enormous and very spread out, so if you want to sample the nightlife, you'll need to take a cab. Always use Uber if you can. Moscow taxis are generally speaking not to be trusted and good luck arguing with a Russian taxi driver about overcharging. So where do you want to stay in Moscow? So one of the easiest ways to decide where to stay is to look at the metro map and orient yourself around the metro stations. Anywhere within the brown ring is considered central. You'll want to stay as close as possible to the metro stations. The metro system itself is fast efficient and you'll never have to wait more than two to three minutes for a train. Highly recommended you use it to get around the city. So meeting women in the daytime in Moscow. So the options are basically endless to meet women in the daytime in Moscow. There are so many attractive women everywhere that you can be opportunistic and approach them in a mall, in a subway, or just walking down whatever street you happen to be on at the time. Russian women in particular, like men who get to the point, are masculine, confident, and direct. Don't waste any time with fancy techniques here. Try and make eye contact, give her some sort of signal that you're interested, and then approach her. These girls are high value, so if the reception is initially frosty, just keep talking. If you're new to approaching women, you will struggle with this because they will not make it easy for you, which is why Moscow scores highly on the difficulty of approach. But what do you expect from the hottest women in the world? If you do want somewhere to start, try Gorky Park. It's absolutely teeming with beautiful girls and you can try a low-key approach here because the girls will be relaxed and taking their time and they're not rushing to go anywhere in particular. So nightlife in Moscow, the opportunities are endless for nightclubs in Moscow. So I've picked out two that are approachable for the average guy to meet seriously attractive Russian women. So the first is Duran Bar, and this is considered one of the higher end places in Moscow, but not so outrageously expensive as others. And the logistics are more favourable, so you can actually talk to the girls. And the other one is Oblaka. So this club has a lot more table service, so the logistics are less favourable. However, there's a ton of hot girls who come here, so you'll be motivated to make it work somehow. Try and stay in the outside area around the bar and get talking to the women. And remember, be direct, lead and wear your best clothes. And finally, number one on the list is Kiev in the Super. Ukraine. So Kiev gets the number one spot on the list for a number of reasons. The girls are equally as hot in Kiev as they are in Moscow and Russia, meaning the best looking girls in the world. The city is nowhere near as expensive or intimidating as Moscow. It's not so spread out, so it's easier to navigate. And the girls are actually easy. I do gotta say, I mean, it, this is completely his opinion. And I understand. But, um... Me, personally, um... I, I, I'm not saying I got a problem with, problem of uh, white girls. I don't. I don't. They did my share of at least. But uh personally I prefer Hispanics and uh and like African American girls. I like the contrast in skin color. Very, it's a, well, I'll get into that at another time. For reasons, the girls are equally as hot in Kiev as they are in Moscow and Russia, meaning the best looking girls in the world. The city is nowhere near as expensive or intimidating as Moscow. It's not so spread out, so it's easier to navigate. And the girls are actually easier to approach in Kiev. And to be frank, they have less options than women in Moscow, though of course the best looking women will always have plenty of options. So where do you want to stay in Kiev? So the two best areas to stay in Kiev are near the Golden Gate and near Taras Shevchenko Park. Now you can also stay on the main walking street, which is Kreshatik, or one of the main streets branching off it, but it's actually not the best place to stay. 
The reason is, is that word has got out about the beautiful women of Ukraine. So there are always loads of, unfortunately, sex tourists walking up and down Krushatik, pestering the girls in a very weird and miscalibrated way, probably offering them money. It gives off an air of seediness, which can wear you down after a while. By all means, have a look, but don't spend the majority of your time there. So if you want to meet women in the daytime in Kiev, daytime approaching is actually where it's at. The reason is that there are just so many attractive women walking around and you can meet a different and better quality type of girl in the daytime than you would meet in a nightclub. So try to avoid wandering up and down Krushatik Street. It will weigh you down after a while to see all the uh, seedy love tourists clumsily hitting on the girls. When, when you chat to Ukrainian girls, be respectful. They are very demanding, but they're ultimate sweethearts too. If you're dominant, and lead them but treat them with the utmost respect the best looking girls in ukraine will expect you to pay for meals and drinks their culture is different to the usa and the uk so don't bulk at this it's low value behavior and remember she has less money than you and in a country like ukraine her looks are our number one asset so of course you need to avoid gold diggers but with time and experience you will have to learn how to spot the warning signs now nightlife in kiev so the hottest club in kiev is chi club he will find some truly stunning women who are open to your approach. Russian and Ukrainian women both respond to leading dominant behavior. So when you approach these girls, relax and don't get overawed. Remember that the average guy in Kiev probably doesn't have as much to offer as you do, and I don't just mean financially. Ukrainian girls are always happy to meet foreigners. So take her out, show her a good time, and you won't go wrong. A good place to take her for a date is around by the Golden Gate. Or take a cab and head to embankment in the Obalon area. Here you can sit by the river, go to one of the restaurants and take a walk down the pedestrianised area. It's one of the prettiest parts of Kiev. It's away from the hustle and bustle and the perfect place to try and woo your new Divoshka. Okay. Well, um... We, we... What is going on? No, I don't care. Um, well, yeah, we, we could talk about that real quick. Um, not for nothing, that felt like more of an advertisement for, like, where to go than what cities were best. Uh, if, if you guys enjoyed this video, maybe I'll check out another one. Because I, I, just, I just picked one at random. So, but no, I didn't really, a lot of his reasoning, I didn't really agree with. And as a single guy, I'm just like, Like, bro, I don't know. All this daytime. If I'm out there for a week or two, I'm not trying to waste half my budget for this trip on one female. And no offense to you girls out there, no offense at all. But I'm gonna be on, but but I gotta be honest. Like, is that really what I'm supposed to do? If I, I show up with five, ten thousand dollars to spend, I'm supposed to blow half of that on you? And that's gold digger status. Let's all be honest for a second. That that's gold. That's gold digger status. And now, um, the countries they picked, they were pretty much. No, oh, they were pretty much all just uh, white girls. I kind of expected a little bit more of diversity. Just a little. Just a little. Um, again, no problem with white girls. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with white girls. But, um... To call somebody the most beautiful girl ever... 
when I think of some of the most recent uh, Miss USA and Miss America and Miss Universe and all this stuff were not. It's just sort of like, um, what? Bro. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that, that, that's my opinion. Uh, feel free to disagree. Don't disrespect me in the comments. Um, there are definitely some of these countries that I, I wanted to visit for a while. I mean, I I, I want to visit uh Europe in general. That I other than uh, other than Antarctica and Australia, that's the only continent I have not been. Those are the only continents I have not been to. Australia, I'm down to go. Although your animals out there scare the God damn life out of me. Uh, Antarctica? No, no, no. I know I said I'm good. I'm good with cold weather, but no, 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 not not that cold. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm more willing to have a uh, conversation with people in the comments. Um. Please don't get disrespectful of each other. I had to handle a couple people that um got outright disrespectful. Now, I might say my opinion. My opinion might be considered controversial, but I don't ever try to get disrespectful. So when people get disrespectful, I will literally I will literally just ban you from being allowed to make comments. Yes, like, no, you just, you can't talk here anymore. This is my channel, I make the rules, I'm allowed to talk shit, because it's my channel. This, <laughs> this is my channel, this is, this is not America. I live in America, but I work on YouTube, and on my channel... I can decide what is acceptable and what is not. Don't get out of line, please. I, I'm perfectly okay with people disagreeing with each other, but if anyone starts to become disrespectful, you, you your comment will be deleted and you'll be banned from making comments on this channel. All right. I don't have time for dealing with that. Uh, I don't, I don't want to get notifications for those type of comments. So just honestly, straight up. I, 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 I don't want to have to waste my time with people just arguing with each other. People want to talk or debate or whatever. hundred percent. Okay. There are rules to debate stuff. So it's all. Be respectful to each other. Um, I know sometimes I can come off like an asshole. A lot of people just don't really understand my sense of humor. I've said it multiple times before. Let's not do that. Okay? Please. Thank you. Anyway. You guys have a good one. I wish you all the best. Um, this was a much longer video than I expected, so I'm probably only going to do one more, and then I'm going to get ready to go to my doctor's appointment. Anyway, you guys have a good one. You're truly hungover hermit out. Salute. You already know. Oh, and cheers.